not my whole life, but you know, since, since I woke up from my coma, I was just being a zombie. As soon as I started paying attention, I I slowly became this guy that, that left this comment. But it didn't take me too long to, to realize uh, something was wrong. Like, something was wrong in the world. And I'm not just talking about the, you know, the Zog conspiracy or whatever you want to call it. I meant like, like, underneath everything, something was wrong. Because I, like, I, I had this... I had this pull of like uh, being drawn to evil and hate, like hating Jews. And the uh, the run up to the, the twenty sixteen election, and it was it was the weirdest, the weirdest sensation, like the weirdest phenomenon. It's like I I'm in like a you know. Like all, you know, various internet sub, sub hate groups, kind of, to some degree, or, you know, I was at the time. And that the whole, the whole time I could sense like things are ramping up and going somewhere where I, I don't want to be there. And it took me a while to like get, get my head out of it and. I realized like really what was going on because one, like I, I didn't know what it was at the time, like why, why I was so still sucked into like a, kind of like a bipolar disorder, I guess that's the best way to describe it. Like, I mean, I know, I knew at the time that it's not, you know, it's not all all Jews are evil. Obviously, you know, not anyone is all anything. People are people. But uh, still, like the like the evil inside is. Uh, I couldn't figure out like what what is this drive to like uh, just hate and want to just you know literally do horrible things. Now, now after watching Rabbi Rubin's lectures and learning Torah for a while, I know 100% what it is. It's God's, uh, God instilled a force in the world. And it, it only activates in Goyim and non-Jews when they, when they act like animals, when they don't, uh, you know, when they don't get control of their base desires, when they just, you know, like, uh, are obsessed with physicality and nothing else, like, you know, Greeks and Romans and Germans and, you know, everything is the physical body and the physical form and athletics and worshiping, you know, human intellect and all kinds of just not real stuff just complete garbage well this this you know random goy on the internet who was an anti-semite his entire life sees sees rabbi ruin speaking the like brutal truth just you know Slashing and burning everyone, everyone that has any shred of lies in them, doesn't matter, you know, everyone on planet Earth, just chopping them down with the truth of God's Torah. And, and this, this goy that was, you know, filled full of hate for Jews his entire life sees one, you know, one 10 minute clip or something. You know, 20 minute, maybe watch the whole thing, who knows. But he, he turns literally from a Nazi until <laughs> to someone who was uh, sharing Robert Rubin's lectures on like literal anti Semite hate sites. <laughs> I 
and I'm I'm not sure like the why like how how can it be where or someone that is seemingly so like the polar opposite of uh, of that like how how can they how can they hear that and they just instantly be like Baruch Hashem <laughs> you know praise praise God like literally oh they see a righteous Jew and they they turn from a hateful evil evil monster to with God's help on, on the you know on the path to uh, to doing Teshuvah to you know rep true repentance and although it's a bumpy road but how you know the the simple answer to how is merit and this is a this is a critical thing for this month for and for this life. <laughs> For everyone to know and for me to constantly remind myself that a person like nothing nothing good especially nothing like in regards to uh getting close to god or serving god or going to heaven certainly none of it happens without a lot of merit and i don't you know I don't know exactly how this this you know goy in the Robert Rubin is uh, left a comment on his video. I don't know how he had the merit. I don't know how I had the merit. All I know is that God had mercy on both of us and a lot of other people to give us a chance to see the truth and to you know give us the choice because that's really all. That's all the freedom that a person has. And th this stuff that is, you know, with God's help, we're going to go over in this stream that relates to this concept also relates to everything, everything else, everything I've been talking about. Um, you know, I don't know if anyone's going to hear this or going to going to start looking around and digging into these sources for themselves and their own lives and start thinking about what they're doing. This also applies to what uh, all the book readers. What a ridiculous name! And everyone that followed Doug, and Doug himself is is doing, and a bunch of people that didn't follow Doug, and everyone else in the entire universe. These are all tools that we can use to save ourselves, to open our eyes, and to follow the real God. And have any chance of doing something good. In Perkevo chapter 3, or uh, Mishnah 15, in this source that we've been using, we're going to have to switch over because we got a book finally. It's from Rabbi Akiva. Everything is foreseen and free will is given. And with goodness the world is judged. And all is in accordance to the majority of the deed. God foresees everything, and yet he gives us free will to choose. Choose whether to go right or left. Choose whether to do good or evil. But most people, for most of our lives, we're so, so literally controlled by the Yetzirah, the evil inclination, by Satan himself. We just don't have the we don't have the capability to fight back to uh, to override that desire in our heart to just do whatever it is we want like I want this thing and I'm going to do it right now that's it but the sages teach that God holds merit for people in reserve sometimes for generations Merit of our forefathers is a a big thing. But sometimes God looks down the line and sees that, you know, these people are so far gone that they have no merits. And, you know, this, you know, one righteous person way back down the line, they have a ton. So we're going to 
God's going to take some of that and hold it in reserve and trickle it like you know, seasoning down through the generations to give give all his descendants a chance to make it because it's it's worth it one for God because it makes the world a better place and it's worth it for that one righteous person because when when that righteous person's descendants do you know do good and do teshuva and serve God and live and go to heaven he gets all their merits as well it's, it's literally God's uh, pyramid scheme but it's real he's the only one that actually pays out Obadiah Barton Rowe on this verse says all is in accordance with the majority of the deed according to what a person repeats and is constant in the doing of good his reward will be multiplied and this is a critical critical thing for everyone to know like I, I don't know how how I got the merit to for God to open my eyes I, I doubt it was anything I did in my my life like the I mean I have no idea what God's self accounting is like but I, I do know what got me from from opening my eyes to uh, to where I am right now it was a lot of this what what Rabbi Akiva is talking about, what Bartner is commenting on, all is in accordance to the majority of the deed. If we want, if we want to do something amazing, like really world-shaking, life-changing, good, we have to do a lot, a lot, a lot of little things. <clears throat> a lot, and that's what I did. When I started learning Rabbi Rubin's lectures, I would just post post links to every, like after a while, we just post, like at first it was just whatever really uh, shook me, I would post links. And then once I got more serious, I started listening to him, like taking what he said a little bit more serious and really applying some things anyway. I started posting clips. And then it got to the point where I post clips every single day like a whole bunch, like five or 10. I just kept doing that for, like I, I think it was about a year where I'd post random clips. And then like, when I started doing it steadily every single day, I just was, you know, I have no idea who watches these, who, you know, I barely get any notifications on Twitter for like a year or two. Maybe once every like three months, someone would, would leave a comment it usually was not that great but i did not care because that you know our job is not to to pay attention to any of that our job is to learn to apply and to share whatever affects us whatever tour affects us and so i just took that to heart because that's what Robert Rubin said and i just kept doing it over and over and over again and then one day something insane happened and then something even like more insane out of like a, I, mean, I, I can't remember i think no is uh yeah i had the test first i had some insane insane test and i didn't pass it 100 percent. i know that but i didn't i didn't cross the uh the horrendous line Baruch Hashem, thank God. Thank God for the strength. All that matters is, all that matters is the strength to outsmart and overpower the Yetzra and pass God's test. That's all. And to learn, learn and apply more. That's all that matters. Literally the only thing. And that, that is the key the key now to getting our teshuva accepted the key to getting more more blessings in life the key to going to heaven the key to everything but none of it is none of it is going to work if we don't do teshuva ourselves we have to learn and we have to apply what we learn and change our life but uh, 
wrench our hearts and to try out the evil just poison root of of uh, of a sob that we all pretty much have inside our hearts carve it out every single day and the scary thing that Robert Rubin says is like a, a non-Jew a goy that doesn't convert they they constantly have that threat of uh, of always like reverting to the traits of a sov evil evil hate there's a Rambam gives a really good commentary on that Perkeia vote. Uh, the freedom of choice, or free, uh, well, I can't remember what it is. Everything is foreseen, yet freedom of choice is granted. This statement includes great things, and so it is fitting that this statement would be of Rabbi Akiva. And this is its, its explanation and brief on condition that you know all that came before it in the earlier chapters. He said, all that is in the world to know, all that is in the world is known to him. May he be blessed. And he comprehends it. That is saying, that is just saying everything is foreseen. And afterwards he says, he should not think that his knowing actions in the future that in his knowing actions in the future, it is obligated by necessity, meaning that to say a person is forced in his actions to do one action out of the many. The matter is not like this, but the rather, but rather free will is in the hand of a man to us to do what he will do. And this is a saying, and free will is given. We all have the choice. He means to say that free will is given to every man, as we elucidated in the eighth chapter. And he said, that the judgment of God may be blessed with people, however, is with kindness and good, not according to the judgment that befits them. As he may he be blessed, explained in Exodus chapter 34, verse 6, of great patience and much kindness and truth. And the rabbis, may their, their memory be blessed, said, of great patience and with the righteous and the evil. As anyone can look around the world and see today that there's a lot of super evil evil people that God is extremely patient with. I mean, he lets them not only breathe, he gives them food and like tons and tons of money. All, you know, mostly in the hopes that they will repent one day. And if not, then, then uh, they get the curse. Their, their, uh, God's, God's patience is, ends up being a curse that we read last a uh, few weeks ago in Parsha Ba'et Kanan, Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 10. God pays, God pays his haters cash to their face to destroy them. That's not the literal verse, but that's basically what the verse means. <clears throat> I, I, I pay those who hate me to their face to make them perish. I will, I will not delay in paying them their due. Back to uh, Rambam's commentary. Of great patience and much kindness and truth, and the rabbis may their memory be blessed of great patience with the righteous and the evil. And the prophet said in Psalms chapter 145, verse 9, good to all is the Lord. And afterwards he said that the virtues did not come to a man according to the quantity of the greatness of the deed, but rather according to the great number of good deeds. And this is that indeed the virtues arrive by repetition of good deeds many times. And with this does a strong acquisition come, not when a man does one great deed from, from the good deeds. 
as from this alone a strong acquisition will not come to him. And the parable with this is that when a man gives a thousand gold coins at one time to one man to whom it is fitting, and he does not give anything to another man, the trait of generosity will not come into his hand with this great act. As, as much as it will come to one who donates a thousand gold pieces a thousand times and gives each one of them out of generosity. This is because one repeated act of generosity a thousand times and a strong acquisition of it come to him in this way. But the other only aroused his soul was a great arousal towards a good act, and afterwards it ceased from him. And so too with Torah, the reward of the one who redeems one captive with a hundred dinar or gives charity to a poor person with a hundred dinar, which is enough for what he lacks, is not like one who redeems ten captives or fills the lack of ten poor people, each with ten dinar. And this, and in this comparison, and this matter, is that which he said in accordance to the majority of the deed, and not in accordance to the greatness of the deed. And this is for two two reasons what the Rambam is talking about. One is, one is he's talking about the breaking our own bad mito or bad, our own bad character traits, like being stingy or jealous or, uh, or anything. We, it takes constant repetition to, to overpower our evil inclination like over and over again. But even more so, it is with earning merits. The merits, you know, it's they they kind of coincide. But the the merits are even more important because they once once a person refines their their character traits to a certain point, it's not. Uh, they just require a kind of like maintenance, I guess. It's still a, a constant battle with some some traits but but with with earning merits especially to do like amazing great things like i said world world changing good things like helping a lot of people to do teshuva get close to god in a real way where they're going to go to heaven make the world an amazing place to live that takes a lot, a lot of merit over and over again. Even, even when it looks like there's nothing going on, like absolutely nothing you're doing looks like it's working. But you're doing everything, you know, everything according to what you know. All you can do. Or at least mostly. Eventually, eventually it pays off. Slowly but surely. But a lot, a lot of times, with with the payoff will come. Like I said, tests. Man, there will be tests. We always, always have to ask God for the help to pass all the tests. And the number the number one way to pass the test, other than you know, most importantly praying to God is learning a lot of Torah and applying it to our life. That's the only way. All all the links for uh where Rabbi Rubin talks about this and the comment that this uh this former anti Semite posted are in the description. Another one that another precable that relates to this that's in the description is uh, chapter three, Mishnah seventeen, from Rabbi Elazar Ben Azaria. He would say one 
Any, anyone whose wisdom exceeds his deeds, to what is he compared? To a tree whose branches are many, but whose roots are few. And the wind comes and uproots it and turns it upside down, as it is said, he shall be like a lonely juniper tree in a wasteland. And shall not see when good comes, but shall inhabit the parched places of the wilderness, a salty land that is uninhabitable. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 6. But one whose deeds exceed his wisdom, what is he like? Like a tree whose branches are few, but whose roots are many, since even if all the winds in the world come and blow upon it, they do not move it from its place. As it is said, he shall be like a tree planted by the waters and spreads out its roots by the river and shall not perceive when heat comes, but its leaf shall remain fresh and will not be troubled in a year of drought, nor will it cease to bear fruit. That's from Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 8. Basically, what Robert Rubin says is that without many good deeds, our wisdom is worthless. Of course, you can know all kinds of all kinds of stuff. Even you know, even Torah, even you know, stuff about God. But if they don't act on their wisdom, if they don't fulfill what they learn, it's all complete. I mean, it's worse, worse than worthless. The sages say a person who who learns but does not apply what they learn, they're worse than a dead rat in the street. Like literally. Because a dead rat fulfilled its purpose in the world. Someone who learns and doesn't apply God's teaching is certainly not fulfilling their purpose. One, one thing that I, uh, I've been thinking about recently regarding my own, my own, uh, personal journey, as well as this, this random, random goy that commented, who was Baruch Hashem, no longer an anti-Semite. May Hashem grant him all the assistance that he needs to continue his journey toward the truth. And that's really an amazing, like insane, insane concept that like any, anyone can go from like a literal Nazi, like a skinhead with swastika tattoos to uh Converting to be a Jew, like going going to a laser laser surgery removal to have their swastika tattoos removed, and then converting to bet dean and getting getting a certain you know Brit Milah circumcision, and then you know put it putting on a, a yarmulke and and going to going to synagogue. I mean, to, to the rational mind, that makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. The only way it makes sense is, is according to God. Now that, that's how you know that Robert Rubin is a very, very rare, very rare thing, because... 90% of the rabbis out there, they don't, they don't give lectures like him. They don't talk about most of the stuff that he talks about, which is all in the same book that they're supposed to, you know, all follow. It's just most of them try to avoid like a lot of stuff that God talks about. <clears throat> and somehow when he says all the, all the things that makes everyone uncomfortable, 
that's that's when it changes the most unlikely people the people that are like seemingly so far away from anything that you would ever possibly think to do with with judaism and god whatsoever all of a sudden that breaks their heart and opens their eyes And that, that's really the only solution to anything good is the truth. You know, some sometimes we have to dial it back a little bit. And do. You can't just outright stuff huge, huge chunks of God's truth in a closet and just, you know, act like they don't exist and think the world's going to be okay. But that, you know, just look at the world. I, that's the way most people act, and the world's not okay. You look at the stuff that Rabbi Rubin does, the Torah that he teaches, it's, you know, logically, rationally, all the big brain people look at what he, look at what he says and teaches, and they think, you know, oh, no, he's going to cause anti-Semitism. He's going to make the Christians hate us. And literally, it's a complete, the complete opposite. At least for anyone, anyone that has any inclination toward the truth. Everyone else, you know, there's no hope for them. They're going to hate Jews anyway. So it really doesn't matter what what you know what gets said. One thing though is most most people most people that have any kind of sense of truth in them do not like. Do not like uh, dancing around an issue. Robert Ruben certainly does not do that. The other thing is, I haven't found a, a Torah source for or anything yet. Is why God uses these these wicked people as a vehicle for uh, teshuva? It, it's it's the strangest phenomenon because according to all the teachings of the sages, God has to. Uh, the only way the only way teshuva is. Uh, successful is if someone you know helping other people do teshuva through kiruv the only way it's successful is if the person that is doing it is also you know learning and applying what they learn and getting close to god so it's it's strange that you know even though it's not the absolute you know source of it it's still like a, a stepping stone on the way toward the truth whether whether it's some uh you know i can't remember what what the uh what the nazi websites are whatever they are you know whether it's some clip that some someone else posted on there with the intention to like Take two minutes of uh, two minutes of Robert Rubin's most like outrageous, out of context uh, lecture about about usury and to make him, you know, make him and all all Jews look bad. And it gets millions of views. Where most of his videos, unfortunately, only get like a couple thousand. Those people. I think mostly it's because people are just lazy and they don't want to put in the effort to watch a two-hour lecture. That and uh, on YouTube, shadow bans the truth just as much as you know lies that people think are the truth.
just really strange. One day we'll figure it out. With God's help. I think there's about 26 days left to Rosh Hashanah. Yep, fourth of a little. Or actually, it's, it's nightfall, so it's probably, it's technically the fifth of a rule. I have a hard time with the, like, backwards math. I need, to, I need to do more. I'm not exactly sure how to do that, though. Trying, trying to do these, but... I'm not sure if this is a good use of time. So I don't, that's, that's one thing, is like when, when you want to take it to the next level, you kind of need some kind of feedback. Is this working? <laughs> this is a good... Is this a good, uh, I mean, it's one thing when I posted like five or 10 clips on, uh, on Twitter, little, like one to two minute videos of Robert Rubin every single day. Cause I didn't take a ton of time. I was just, I watched lectures the, the night before during the day and I cut little clips by screen recording it on my phone. And then when I wake up, I'd review everything. And then post, you know, post them in the morning before I went and did whatever else during the day. And I didn't really think about it much. Other than, other than maybe, you know, go and comment occasionally and post some kind of follow up thing with a link to the link to the lecture but trying trying to take it to uh, the next level where it's more than that like where you need to know is this working I guess and if, if people don't let you know what's working then the only other way to know is is how insane how insane Satan makes your life, and how uh, how much how much uh, how much hassle to test you got to deal with. I'm not, I'm not sure how many how many tests we got to deal with. We've been a couple. Thank God for the strength to get through them. Okay. Since no one, since no body is here, I mean, Satan is always here. Since nobody's here, I will get going. In. Try to get some other work done. Someone's got to be out there. Someone else that wants to know the truth. Someone else is sick. 
Snicker the eel in their heart and want to carve it out with a knife. Please, God, let us be the vessel to help them. Please allow all our gear to be successful. Please grant us all, all our wisdom and strength to see the truth and accept it and do what you say and outsmart. I'll smart know we're proud of the yes or wrong and to pass your tests. Please accept our Teshubah.